Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you, transcribed Monday through Friday, by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. What are you going to do today, darling? Take it easy? Oh, I thought I'd milk a few cows, collect the eggs from under the hens, and reap the hay. <laughs> Isn't that what a good farmer's wife does? She doesn't reap hay. She doesn't? What does she reap? Mm, the wild wind, wheat, or all of the benefits. I haven't any of those, have I? Haven't you? I don't think so. You're always saying I make hay, so for a change, I thought I'd reap it. Well, reap me another piece of toast first, please. <laughs> Such a reap, I tell <laughs> David, do you realize you're starting to eat like a farmer? Well, I've got to get into shape for the spring planting. This city life's made me very soft. Honey, I always thought it was overeating that made people soft. But I'm not complaining. I love to see you eat. Here's your toast. Darling, just wait until we've lived in the country a while. I can't wait. We'll be like different people. I like us just the way we are, don't you? Certainly I do. But we'll be different in a better way. We'll be stronger. We'll be real. Because we'll live with the land. Living with an awful lot of things already. There's Shakespeare and Bluff. And soon they'll be the baby. And you watch how they'll thrive on a farm. Fresh milk, fresh air, good fresh earth around. Oh, darling, I, I don't think we have... Any idea how wonderful it's going to be? I know I don't. Darling, is anything wrong? No, no, no. What could be wrong? You just don't look right to me. You you feel all right? I feel fine, David. Now stop worrying. Being an expectant father and house owner isn't going to make you a worrier, is it? Then why are you so... I was thinking of all the things we'll have to do if we're... We're going to move to Eastbrook before the spring planting. Darling, would you do me a favor? Certainly, anything. What? Start taking things easy. David, what do you mean? Well, we've had an awful lot of excitement these past few weeks, and you should be taking care of yourself. I have been, David. I can't stop moving around just because I'm going to have a baby in months and months and months. Five months, to be exact, and that's not very far off. It's years. Your t sense of time is curiously elastic. You think that five months is years. It's no wonder that I'm always kept waiting for you. I never keep you waiting more than 20 minutes. Well, it seems like years. Well, just to please you, I won't do anything strenuous today. Good. Now I just want to read the stock market page before I plow off to the office. I don't consider looking at the stock market reading. Oh, David, wait a minute. Don't turn that page. What's the matter? I want to read that ad on the back of it. I don't consider looking at an ad reading it. David, it's a sale. So what? Oh, they're selling them for nothing. Selling what for nothing? Towels. We've got towels. You can always use more, and they're practically giving them away. I'd be a fool to let them go by. I suppose if there were a sale on Derrick's, you'd buy three. If I could get three for the price of two, I might. You. I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been fine. And you? You look wonderful having a baby. He agrees with you. I wish you'd tell Mr. Norton. He keeps telling you to take it easy. Oh, he's right. You must. This is a plot. I should have known better. But it is not for mer very much longer. Then, a beautiful baby. I got something beautiful this morning, Bertha, and without waiting. Ach so? The most stunning towels at a sale. They were practically paying people to take them. They were so cheap. And what a mob. But I got right up to the counter and I got one dozen. Oh, look 
This little boy lives upstairs in our building. He admired our dog. That bicycle, he's so excited. His father gave him that for Christmas. It's awfully big for him. Yeah. If I were his mother, I would not let him ride into the streets. You know, sometimes I wonder how so many children have managed to grow up in New York. It seems so terribly dangerous looking at it from this end. You and Mr. Norton, you are right. You move out to a farm... There, everything is always good. Looks like I'm going to be convinced from every side. He looks as if he's in trouble. He goes so far. Stop me, stop me. I can't stop. There's a car coming. Help. Mrs. Norton, stop. Oh. Mrs. Norton, are you all right? Hey, hey, lady, that was great. I don't know what... Lady, are you all right? What happened? I... Oh, of course I'm all right. You can't stand up, yes? Of course I can stand up. Are you all right? I'm fine. But if you hadn't caught on to those handlebars, I'd have... Are you sure you can stand up? Well, you don't think I'm going to sit here the rest of my life. I have. My bicycle hasn't got one scratch on it. Say, you're the lady who has a dog. Look at your knees. Ah. Oh. No, I help you up. Bertha, I'm fine. I don't need any help, thanks. There, see, I'm standing up. I feel perfectly all right, I think. Ma'am, you're getting awful pale. I'm I, I, I starting to feel awfully pale. I'm here, Mrs. Norton. Lean on me. You want me to get my mother? I, I don't want anything except to sit down again. I, I'm a little dizzy. I'm going to get my mother. She'll help me. Mrs. Norton, can you walk? I, I'm feeling better now. Of course I can walk. No more, Dizzy? No more. I guess it was just falling down like that. Yeah, you fall down hard. I'm just as clumsy as that dog of ours. I, I'll never say another word against him as long as I live. Now I call you a taxi and you go right away to the doctor's. To the doctor's? Because I bought my knee. I never heard I of I do it. not argue. I call the taxi. It's very bad to fall like that when you will have a baby. But first, I'm feeling fine now, not even dizzy, so I can't... I have... go with you if it's necessary. My head feels light. Be sure you tell the doctor everything. Honestly, you're worse than Mama. <laughs> Now you stay there in the bed, and I bring you a hot water bottle. The doctor said I should stay in bed today because I was dizzy or something. But I, I feel fine, which just goes to show you I don't need all the pampering everybody seems to think I should have. You would like another pillow? Another pillow? Well, I guess I don't mind if I do. My back is sort of stiff. But just a little. Yeah, just a little stiff. It's genug stiff. I go downstairs and bring you up a hot water bottle. I left mine at Mama's, thanks. Maybe by tonight I can get up so when David comes home he won't have to know a thing. Oh, Shakespeare, come on up. That's right. Hello, you kitty, 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 kitty. The bump on my head is sore. Uh oh I pull down the shade and you <laughs> sleep. And you wake up. All fine. I, I'm fine now. I just feel sort of tired. Honey, I wasn't tired this morning, but David said I... Claudia? Darling, you home? I... Uh, what? Hey, Mrs. Norton. Answer me. Oh. David, is that you? Oh, you're in the bedroom. Why didn't you say so? David, you're home. What time is it? Half past six. What are you doing in... Claudia, you're in bed. Well, I, I fell asleep. Have you been asleep long? I don't, I don't know exactly. I called you all afternoon. There was never any answer. I, I thought you were out. I, I guess I just didn't hear the phone ringing. Have you been sleeping all that time? I guess so. Well, h how are you, David? You're looking fine. You look awful. You have a bump, bump on your forehead. What happened? How could anything have happened? I've been sleeping all afternoon. You, you told me to take it easy. Now, come clean. You're not the kind of girl who goes to sleep in the afternoon without a reason. Isn't being sleepy a good enough reason? No, not for you. Ouch, David, don't lean on my knee. What's the matter? Oh. Now, how did you do that, you little fool? How do you think I fell down? Ouch, I better not shout. My 
head hurts. Claudia, answer me. What happened? Don't you shout either. Dr. Williams said I should have quiet. Dr. Williams? You went to Dr. Williams? Bertha made me. But he said I was fine and the baby was fine. It was a big waste of money. You're sure you're all right? Call Dr. Williams. You had to go shopping for bargains. You couldn't resist buying a towel for two cents less than usual. You had to rush downtown. It was very crowded, I suppose. Jammed. It was a wonderful sale. I'll bet it was. Well, but all you women pushed and shoved each other like cattle. What'd you do, faint? I did not. I just got dizzy. Claudia, if I ever catch you doing anything so crazy again, don't you realize you're going to be a mother? Of course I realize it. That's why I... Well, you'd never know it. Does your mother know about this? No, I didn't have a chance to tell her. David, you're angry with me. I knew you'd be. Angry? No, I'm not angry. I'm furious. That's worse. I hoped you'd be sorry and you'd take me in your arms and tell me... David, you can't love me. Can't I? David, if it's Mama, don't tell her, please. Well, you don't deserve me not to tell her. Please don't. There's no point in making it worse, is there? David, if you love me... First, I'll see if it's Mama. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Norton. Yes, in 12C. Who? Oh, Mrs. Compton in 16A. My wife? Well, she seems to be... Uh, pardon me, but how did you know she wasn't well? No, she didn't tell me. He was on a bicycle, and... And she stopped it. No, I... I didn't know. Thank you very much. Yes, she's fine, just resting a little. Yes, you're right. She's a pretty wonderful girl. Goodbye. David, I couldn't hear you talking. Did you tell Mama? You little dope. Why didn't you tell me? Can't tell you what? That it wasn't the towel that tripped you, but a runaway bicycle. Oh. His mother called to find out how you were. That was awfully sweet of her, wasn't it? I know how she'd feel if anything happened to her son. Because I'm already starting to feel a little that way about ours. I'm... I'm proud of you, darling. You're not angry anymore? You love me? I love you so much I'd like to take you over my knee when you do something like this. Is that good? It's terrible. But I can't help it. Come here. There's a bump on your forehead I've never kissed before. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. Spending more time marketing these days? Getting a bit frazzled? Trying to buy wisely? Well, here's a suggestion. Many food stores now not only have Coca-Cola for you to take home, but have the familiar red cooler with ice-cold Coke for you to enjoy on the spot. When you see that inviting cooler, lady... Stop for the pause that refreshes. You'll shop better refreshed. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you, transcribed, with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. <laughs>